And here's the thing. More than uh, more than 150, I think it was about 155, I said, didn't I, a second ago, have been arrested uh, during anti-lockdown protests down in the capital. This was uh, the group Save Our Rights UK. And believe, if you can get any of these people on the radio, then tell me the key, believe me. Because uh, they send out extravagant emails saying, we will be out there protesting for our rights and freedoms. You say, oh, that's great, come on the radio and talk about it. And you don't hear anything. Um, and that often tells you something about how organised a, a protest group is. Uh, but it started at Marble Arch, which is down in West London, for the uninitiated on Saturday afternoon. The Met Police said it had been a challenging day for its officers. It said it made arrests for a number of different offences, including breaching coronavirus restrictions, assaulting police officers and illegal drugs. There were also protests at the weekend in Liverpool, Manchester, Bristol and Bournemouth. There was also one in Leeds where 10 people turned up. Only 10? What's going on, Leeds? I sense there's something more happening here. Um... If this was only about people who were devastated by the financial effects of lockdown, the inability to earn a living to look after themselves or their families, I'd kind of understand that. But every time I every time I take a closer look at these protests, I, I sort of see something. Oh, I see the anti, anti-vax brigade. I see the 5G merchants. I see the Great Reset fraternity. In fact, I see more of those guys than I see of the others. I'm not really seeing the local businessman, the butcher, the baker. The publican standing up saying, you know, I'm here because I want to protect my livelihood. I don't see that very often. Uh, but what I see is very much the kind of Piers Corbyn kind of lot. And you sort of end up with what looks more like a mild form of anarchy, really. Uh, anyone looking at those images from the weekend would have seen lots of confrontations between protesters and the police. Uh, and those video clips, which are then mischievously edited in order to show the police in a bra- bad light. Pretty much every one of those incidences. Um, are of someone either resisting arrest or not moving on when they're asked to do so. It's it's kind of, it's almost as simple as that. And then some halfwit comes along and cites the Magna Carta and the whole thing gets inflamed. And then the person they're trying to address, kind of, if you notice, it's well, it's kind of well-trodden routine. The person they're trying to arrest then sort of flops to the ground in a big pile on the pavement. Um, and that makes them this kind of dead weight. So... You've got a solitary officer there to start with on his Todd, who then tries to pick them up and can't. So he calls for some backup and his mate turns up and they both grab a limb each. Uh, But of course, the protester has two more limbs available uh, and he's going to use those limbs as well. So he's (laughs) this is his moment in the limelight. After all, I mean, the police are the enemy. They must be resisted at all times. You've got to fight for your life, fight for your rights, fight against the system, fight against the establishment. It's what you have to do. Fight against the elites. These morons are thinking all of this. So the protester wiggles a little more and then it ends a police officer number three into the equation. He's already taken a mighty kick in the kahunas for his trouble. Uh, so he might need some backup as well. So along comes officer number four. So you've got four cops, one protester. The police have got a limb apiece. But David Ike fanboy isn't going quietly, of course. He's not finished. He's going to make this as hard as he possibly can. Enter two more cops to try and make this arrest happen smoothly and without the protester getting injured, by the way. And then the entire scene allows idiots with camera phones to say things like, why does it take six officers to arrest one man? You hear that time and time again. Uh, The cops didn't go looking for a fight. They aren't instigating the trouble. I've said this time and time again. If a cop asks you to move on, uh, you just move on. No further conversation needed. Can you move on, please? You're not allowed to protect. Okay, that's it. Done. End of. Finished. Finished. So were those protests at the weekend, are they really about just lockdown? I mean, by this stage in the proceedings, the protesters uh, had almost locked themselves into a frenzy of almost hypnotic indignation. You've seen what people are, we've taken away our rights and our freedom. It's not Braveheart, mate. It's a protest at Marble Arch. Get over yourself. They seem to believe they're onto something. The globalists are changing the world. They want to remote control your brain by tinkering with your DNA via a dirty vaccine. It's that kind of stuff. Um... You know what? People have been coming out with this garbage for seven decades, probably longer than that. But I mean, in in terms of some of the reference point. You know, the Great Reset, the Build Back Better. That's the other one. You spotted that, Ricky, the Build Back Better thing. Build Back Better. You know when that was first used? 2004. 2004 after the Indian Ocean tsunami. 
Uh, Bilbo, and it's been used since then from by students and charities. Just a phrase. The other United Nations have got a phrase for us, etc. So were those pro when you look at those protests and I look, I understand if somebody is genuinely protesting because philosophically, like the rest of us, we're all scratching our head here thinking, right, is this is and I draw your attention back to what I said at the top or with, with Mike about, you know, Wales, 17 percent increase in cases in England, 30 percent drop in cases. So Wales are going back to something at the end of the week that looks a little bit like another lockdown. And we're coming out of one, which for some places will still look like a lockdown, like where I live and where many of you listening live as well. If you're in tier three, uh, it isn't it, it's not uh, pretty. Uh, if you're in tier one, it's great. Uh, Lily says, blimey, Ian, did you actually watch the behavior of the police in London? I don't think you did, uh, but you'll have seen them on their knees in the summer. Um Yes, I saw. Look, it depends what angle you want to look at it from. Am I looking at some police officers, maybe eight or ten of them, trying to arrest a wriggling protester who's got no intention of being arrested? That always looks bad. It always looks bad. The police can't win that. Kim says you're describing a police state. Why is that a police state? At the moment, because of the pandemic, there is no real right to protest, OK? Hence the reason why you will get a proportion of people getting arrested. Um, it, that's, that doesn't define a police state. That means at the moment there is a pandemic. And because of the new regulations on this, you can't just go out and protest. You can't protest if you're Extinction Rebellion or Black Lives Matter either. You could have done previously. If you've organised your protest through the correct channels, then I think you are still allowed a, a scintilla of a protest. Uh, but just pitching up a whole group of people... You know, it's not a night out with Rita Ora, for goodness sake. You've got to organise these things. 0344 499 1000. Were the protests really about lockdown? Though? Are they, I mean, specifically about lockdown. If you consider, and I mentioned at the top there, the, you know, the business person who's there to say, my business has closed. It, I, I don't understand it. I'm living in an area where there's not loads of infections. And the last time I looked, you can't make a policy to get rid of a pandemic. So I'm protesting so the government can see the anger. And that will be shared by several backbench Tory MPs who intend, as far as we know so far, to vote against the government in that vote tomorrow. If it was that, I would kind of get it. But when it starts descending into this is a police state, then I'm kind of I, I'm, I'm sort of slightly stuck. Carter says, stop uh, denigrating those good people who I just lost it there. Those good people who attended the protests in London. Uh, you sound like a stuck record. Well, I didn't create the news story. The people <laughs> that were protesting. I'm asking the question. There's nothing wrong with a protest. As long as you're allowed to protest, that's fine. So there's point number one. You might not be allowed to protest because if you haven't organised it properly, you can't just turn up. I saw a guy on social media posted a video of the, the police turned up in like a motorway sort of Melton Mowbray services or something, uh, motorway service area. And they were doing a PNC check on the number plates of the coaches. I assume they were trying to establish whether the coaches had travelled, illegally travelled because of the lockdown, an unnecessary journey from one part of the country to another. I imagine that. And this guy's filming it. And he says uh, in the in the piece, uh, he's, he scans or does a panorama of the car park and he is commentating on his piece. And he says, look, all the cars in this car park, you've got cars, you've got vans and the police are vehicle checking two coaches. This is the epitome of oh, fascism at its worst. Fascism at its worst. Has this fella never heard of Mussolini? And he's got the hump about a couple of cops checking a number plate of a coach. They're going a bit Wallace Arnold with the walkie talkies and he's making comparisons to Enrico Corradini. Goodness sake, what's going on over there? 
That's not a police state. You might disagree with it. You might not be best happy with it. You might think I want to protest. But what are they really all about? I'm not seeing when I when I, when I watch some of those um, protesters and I look at some of the banners and I hear some of the chants. Uh, I look at this and I think, hang on, this doesn't to me look like legitimate protesting about the fiscal damage that a lockdown does. This seems to have gone into another territory. Shirley says the government has an agenda. Where am, where am you cannot breathe because of chemicals in the weather deliberately put there? That's the kind of nonsense I'm dealing with. They put chemicals in the weather now. They've got chemicals in the weather. They've got chemicals in the vaccine. They're going to tinker with my DNA. The United Nations are monkeying around with all manner of agendas. Apparently Boris is just a puppet. He does what he's told by the UN and a charity called the World Economic Forum that have a grand title. So it makes people think they mean something. And frankly, they're an NGO. And like other any other NGO, they have an agenda. The RSPCA have a flipping agenda, for goodness sake. The Vegan Society have an agenda. They all have an agenda. That's the whole point of existing. The United Nations is meant to have an agenda. Have you seen the United Nations trying to tell governments what they think? Well, that's what they do. You'll get no argument from me. The United Nations is a wholly ridiculous organisation most of the time. It may have its uses. I've yet to see one. And I've said constantly, if you go to that building in New York, the UN headquarters, you could lob 18 floors off that building and nobody would notice. The world would not notice a single difference. However, they are the United Nations. They are there for that reason. They are meant to have commonality with countries, binding arrangements where they can, synergy between nations and ideas and ideals. 0344 499 1000. So anyway, help me out here. Yes, of course we can have a, a, a joke at the expense of a mad conspiracy theorist. Um, it's interesting that conspiracy theories don't tend to come true. And if you've noticed that, everything from man on the moon to, well, Lord, we could go on, couldn't we? Let's not, because for everyone I mentioned, somebody will call in and try to counter it. Um, so what is it about when you see the protesters? What What is going on there? Were those protesters really about lockdown? I don't think they were. I think most of the people that I saw there were not people who were angered by what they thought was a philosophically inaccurate response to lockdown. I think they were arguing about police states and all sorts of other things, uh, which is at, which is high octane garbage and quite dangerous as well. Uh, but the art of protest, I, I love and support. We're going to talk to Peter Tatchell in a second, a man who's been around the world protesting for 50 years, for goodness sake. He's been beaten, punched and jailed and all manner of things for his troubles. 0344 499 1000. Were the protests really about lockdown? Come on. 